Hello, oldies and goodies here. Welcome to my next segment of my Coins Around the World with Oldies um, series. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm going to be going one by one, A through Z, and uh, kind of giving you a little bit of details about the countries and where they're located. As you can see, Australia's there, all marked up with a big capital letter D. Well, it's a big continent. And for coin-related stuff, uh, the emu and the kangaroo is uh, was put on their coins uh, as their animals, kind of like our eagle. But uh, they do different things today. They still do the kangaroo, but uh, it's, a, it's a Perth Mint. Um, I think it's Perth Mint, Royal Canadian, Royal, Royal Mint, whatever. But, uh, kangaroo is like, uh, the trademark for Australia because it's the only continent that holds and carries, or, you know, whatever, kangaroos. None of the, uh, none of the, any, any of the other continents have, uh, kangaroos. Uh, they also have the emu which is uh you know big long big bird whatever um kind of like an ostrich i guess but uh yeah those are the, that's coin related right well let's let's get into a little bit more information about australia because largest con um largest island continent and with one country in it it's australia it used to be owned by the british you can take Australia, and it will cover the surface of America, uh, of United States. It would encompass almost all of Europe, the size of it. It's a big island. It's a very arid, dry continent, so there's a lot of desert. Um, and there's a lot of gold. 22 karat, 24 karat gold. Um, back in the uh, 1800s, originally... Uh, they deemed that as a penal colony, and that's where they would dump off all their bad people, you know, people with convicts and felonies and, you know, whatever, even misdemeanors, I guess. And then that was back, like, 1850s, 60s, something like that. And then they turned around and realized there was gold in them hills. Well, the British took back over and uh, started sending people over there to, you know, habilitate <laughs> the convicts and uh, make it into a country, which was still owned by the British up until the 20s, 30s, somewhere around there. And then I think uh, the 40s, they, they became a their own country. No, I think it was like 20s, 25, something like that. With uh, King... Uh, King George the uh, the Fifth, you know, uh, Australia has always been a uh, military basis uh, for World War One, World War Two, all that, and we used to station people over there um, on on the continent. We actually used to make their coins too to offset the amount of the amount of troops and that were staged there. Australia couldn't make enough coinage to go around. So Denver and the San Francisco mint minted coins for Australia. Getting back to the animal kingdom, you got a co uh, kookaburra. You've got the koala. The koala gets to sleep 20 hours a day. That's their, that's their sleep time. They, they have to sleep 20 hours a day. So I don't know how long they're up for, but 20 hours a day, they're sleeping. <laughs> Then you get the platypus, which is very dangerous. Uh, it, uh, the poison from a platypus could kill a small dog or make a human really, really sick. I mean, very sick. Anything on that island will either kill you or eat you, even the aborigines. <laughs> yeah, that's a joke. Well, or is it? <laughs> um, you also got 18 different varieties of uh, snakes that are venomous they have the most uh, venomous snakes in the world 
is just on that island itself. Um, also, you have yourself uh, uh, camels. Camels. You wouldn't think camels. Well, it is a desert, but uh, when they were building the railroad through Australia and all that, they used to use camels for the hard labor and all that uh, to carry stuff around, whatever. They were camels. They're, believe it or not, they have the most camels than all of Egypt and part of Africa. Um, their population of the country is 22 million people, which is equivalent to as how many we have in uh, New York itself. We have like 18 to 19 million in New York State it's alone by itself. And then you got 22 million that, on a big, huge continent. <laughs> um, that's really not that many people. Like I said, mostly it's desert. So most of the um, cities are on the coastline of Australia, you know, where it's nice and wet. Is the water too wet, Melissa? Or is it just, you know, just just mildly wet? <laughs> That's a joke. But buyer boys would be good because um, Australia, um, the kangaroos are actually a nuisance. They get into, they you know, they just like deer, they're crossing roads and everything else and cars are slamming into them or, or you know, they're just, they're like a pest more than anything. And the largest kangaroo is the red kangaroo. There's four varieties of them. All right, enough of that. The life expectancy is uh, 90s and up. They have a very good health care system, unlike the U.S. Um, the government takes care of all their people. So, yeah, they have a very good life expectancy. Imagine that, a country that, you know, it, it doesn't meet the dollar value of U.S., but yet has a great health care system. And they're always able to and, and ready to help out in any war situation. They're definitely not a neutral country, okay? But you don't never hear of Australia, you know, being in bases and, and fighting. You might hear a little bit about it, you know, through the British and all, but you don't hear you don't hear much about Australia. You know, when they were fighting, World, you know, the Pacific with uh, Japan and all that, that was a that was a big staging area. Um, let me let me uh, look at my list here. But yeah, the. Um, there's gold in them hills. But getting back to uh, being convicts on the island, the very first law enforcement police officers were the top 12 convicts of the, of the continent or of the colony. And they were the most trusted, or I should say they could be trusted to be police officers. Now, that, that, that kind of tells you, like, What? You made a convict a police officer? No wonder all of our police officers are corrupt in the states, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's it's a known fact that twelve convicts was uh, um, headed the police office or police whatever when they start started becoming a country and you know etc. Um. Did you know there was more pubs in Australia than there are gold mines or silver mines or whatever, or whatever, jewel mines, there's mine, all types of mines. There's more pubs per square area than there is mines. And they got, and a lot of people get get drunk a lot. <laughs> uh, just saying, must be, it's a, it's a British thing, right? No. They average 83 liters a year per person, average. 83 liters is nothing to me. That's like 22 gallons. I drink that in a week. <laughs> oh, whatever. I, I 
I got that was horny. So, and the dingo fence, you know, a dingo is like a wild animal, whatever, laughing eye, you know, whatever type of animal it is. But they, they have a dingo fence, which is longer than the wall of China. And you, you, you're looking at Asia right there uh, up above it. It's like, yeah, the fence is longer than the wall of China. <laughs> uh, I guess it keeps the dingoes from uh, coming in and eating you up, eating you alive. Like I said, anything on that island pretty much will kill you or eat you. So let's get back. Let's get to the coins, anyways. That was uh, those are those are a lot more facts about Australia. But those are the ones that stuck in my mind the most is uh, coin related. This one here is a 1917 I, which was made in India, um, Kata, something whatever Calcutta, something like that. A mint, which was owned by the British at one time. And as you see where it says, and they say it on a lot of coins, I-N-D, Emperor, Imp. That's Emperor of India, okay? It was a big deal to be an Emperor of India. <laughs> or an Empress, like uh, Queen Victoria. But um, that's a one penny from 1917, and that's where it was minted at. And these go side to side, so like a metal. Here. I don't know what's on the plastic, but Commonwealth of Australia, one half penny, 1917. Really nice shape. That's why it's uh, worth a few dollars. I don't go by. I don't go. I only go by that is I know that it's a valuable coin. And then here's a 1917 large set, one penny. And that's KM23. The other one was KM22. It's the 23rd variety that this country made in, in Australia. Before that, they used the British coins, kind of like what we did here in the U.S. And like I said, it's a really a nice, really nice coin. Be nice if it was like, you know, bronzy looking. But it's dark. And that's the 1917i. There was 6,240,000 made, and it's made of bronze. So we're going to go through here, and it's probably going to take 30 minutes to do the video. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to do a uh, live stream, live premiere. 1924, that's a KM24. Um, apparently... That's when they started printing dimes, you know, uh, that KM number with King George V. And that's silver. It's a threepence, 1924 threepence. And there was only two million made of them, and it's 925 silver. Now, I had a lot of help with, uh, from uh, uh, MD Melbourne, Jim. Everybody knows him as Jim. Uh, with some coins that I didn't have of the King George V. I had the King George VI. I also had help with from High Hole Silver, which is now a High Hole something, I don't know. And uh, this is a sixpence that I got from him. These are metal detecting finds that he that Jim Melbourne found. And he was gave it to me as a gift. I did a mail call for it. And of course, Cam 25, which is right in line. And I, as I explained, you know, you got a little bit of blackish there. Oh well, I don't clean coins, so that's what is. Whatever he did with it, whether he just cleaned it with a toothbrush or a scrubby pad or some wire brush, I don't know. But anyways, uh, <laughs> you don't clean coins. Uh, if you can get some of the dirt off with soap and water, that's fine. But try not to rub the patina off. Okay, and the patina's still there. And it's still got a little darkish. 
But you've got the, well, you know, see the emu and the kangaroo and then the crest. You know, where we got the bald eagle and, you yeah, know, different. And then we're going to step up the game a little bit. We're going to go to KM26, very next one, coin in line. And as you see, that was never cleaned. I mean, it came out of the ground, but not cleaned to the point where it's rubbed and shiny scrubbed. It's a little bit of a little bit of wearing there. And this is a 1927 KM26. And then patina's pretty much gone on it anyways. You know, you don't have that shiny look. But it's a one shilling. That's kinda like a dollar a dollar coin. Just for just for you you know, give you an idea. The what do you call it, the the decimal coins. And then we're moving up a little higher. We got a KM thirty seven, hold on. It's bothering me. Nineteen thirty seven. Or I'm sorry, KM thirty seven, nineteen forty four. Now we're talking World War Two. And it's a threepence or three pence or three pennies. Three cents. Oh. There you go. And if you look right there underneath the four is an S. And that's San Francisco. Uh, I got a couple of these from Re Retro. I won. Um, ha ha, your mom actually gave me a couple too. And, um, yeah. Very nice uh, trepids. And then we're going to move up the line to a KM38. Now, remember, that's just Krauss Mauer catalog number, and that's every country has its own. Uh, from one to one to whatever of uh, coins for that for that country, unless it was changed, unless the country was changed or changed names and all. It's a forty-two Australian sixpence, two fifty, two fifty, nine two five silver, ten million ninety-six thousand made. Now, I don't remember seeing a uh, mint mark on this, so this was minted by the uh, Royal Mint here in, in, uh, in Australia. And those, like I said, the King George VI. Here's another King George VI, and this is a shilling. See, I have a shilling. Now, in 1938, 37-38, they made a crown which is like four shillings or something like that, five shillings. It's like a $5 coin, but it's, uh, it's called a crown. And uh, Rachel has been looking for it for me. Oh, I forgot to talk about rams. Okay, there's another animal that they put on there. That, And see the S at the bottom? That's made in San Francisco also during wartime. 14 million of these made. I just watched, uh, what was it, uh, Christian from uh, Germany. Uh, him and Sheldon did a trade, and oh, man, he had like 10 or 20, 10 or 12 freaking uh, shillings, ram shillings. All right, and here's the uh, ver King George VI version of the florin. And you see it hasn't been cleaned. It's still got dark black a little bit. It's kind of, you know, metal detected. KM40. And look, it's worth 11 bucks. Or, so to speak. And there's the emu. And the kangaroo again with the crown and the crust. 22 million of these made. And it's 925. And it's still worth a good eleven dollars, at least rough estimate. All right, moving on. We got ourselves a nineteen sixty Australian halfpenny, 
that's a cam 61 we just went from 40 to 61 so there's 20 other different varieties before this coin that I'm missing but my quest is to get 20 coins for each country and I'm already over that with this country and as well as United Kingdom I'm way over tw uh, 20 coins but Queen Elizabeth II the young head and as you see it's 1960 like I said they put the portraits on the uh, coins of live when they're living they're looking to have a new king uh, Great Britain so all the coins all the coins and currency is going to change to put the new image on of the of the new king that they've already picked out matter of fact they've already made coins this year 2019 waiting for Queen Elizabeth to pass because she's not going to make it she's not going to make it very much longer 75 Australian one cent KM62 and the last one I just showed you was 61 that was a half penny they went to a small penny and now they're putting these animals on it I don't know what that is I'm pretty sure it's some type of uh, critter <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to look it up yourself. 134 million made of bronze. Almost 135 million. I like to have the numbers on on the back of the mintages for some reason. Uh, but I know I got one of one of them. One of uh, 170 whatever million. <laughs> Here's a nickel, Australian nickel. They changed their decimal point. Because, see, this 1982. In the 70s, they got rid of the decimal coins and they went to cents. Or British went to pences, which is a, pretty much the same as cents. And look at that. Look at that creature. <laughs> look at the claws on that thing. That thing would probably kill you and then eat you. I think it's an anteater. Pretty sure it's an anteater. 135, 100, 140 million almost, copper nickel. But that's eh, about the best example I have. All right, now we're going to get into uh, a 10 cent coin. But as I was saying, they got rid of the uh, decimal system the three pence, the six pence, uh, blah, 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 florin, shilling. They went to uh, a dollar value. And their coinage is only worth, uh, well, they're worth uh, about 75 cents to our dollar right now. And in the description below, um, there'll be uh, some links there. So if you want to go and play with your foreign coins and learn something um, and have the information to back it up, KM65, we were just at 64, and look at this thing. What is that? <laughs> Looks like a fish. Or a thing from Alien or something coming out of his chest. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Alien. I did my research. You guys do your own research. Uh, here's a 69 KM66 version of a 20 cent coin. You know, didn't we have 20 cent coins in America? Yeah, I think we did. Of course, they were silver. And this is a little bigger than the size of a quarter, smaller than a half. But uh, it's 66. We were just at 65 km. So I've got a pretty good extensive collection here. I don't know what that must be on the inside. But it's a platypus. 20 cent coin, platypus. Wish I had a better example, but I don't. Yeah, it'll work. It's worth 20 cents right now. I'll take it to Australia. And then we got a beauty right here. We got a proof. 1966. 50 cent coin. Let me see if you can see. Proofness. Proofness. Yeah, that's it. Proofness. When we were at 66. Now we're at 67. It's a half dollar coin, 50 cents. 
And it's got a beautiful design on the back, you know, with the kangaroo and the emu. 50 cent. And it's 80% silver. This is the last year they produce silver for their coinage. Unless, unless it's a commemorative, possibly it might be silver, but as far as common coins, uh, yeah, this should have never been taken out of the package, but look how beautiful that thing is. And it's not a rare, well, it's kind of rare, but it's not. It's 36 million coins. I wouldn't just call that rare, but it's definitely a valuable coin in the collection, 1966. Then we get into uh, the 50 cent one, uh, KM68, we were just at 67. And it's gonna get funky here when we get higher up numbers, cause then they started killing the hell out of 50 cent coins, here, see? And of course this is copper nickel. As I said, 66 was the last year of silver. And that's a 69. Different, different, uh, different queen. Yeah. Looks a little different, doesn't it? No, uh, maybe not. She's got that pudgy nose. All right. Move that out of the way. We're going to go back into a Neko again. Now, remember I said I saved every variety. Well, this is a different variety. It's KM80. That's a nickel. It's a 1993. The difference in the variety is Queen Elizabeth has a crown on now, not a tear. She actually has the British crown on. So it changed design, which causes a new unique number for that for that particular coin. And then, these are goatees, but not the goatees you guys think about with MD Melbourne. These are goatees as far as $1 coins. And this is a commemorative coin. Okay, it's a $1. And this is what they used to call goatees, but now they're calling the $2 coin goatees. I don't, I don't get it. But look at the number. We just jumped from KM80 to KM208. Um, let's see, that's a hundred and twenty-eight varieties that they made <laughs> in between that last one and that one. So, yeah, I'm never going to collect it all. And this is, like I said, this is a commemorative of something. I can't, I don't think I wrote, I didn't write it down what it was. Oh, it was land, land something. Anyways, it's whatever it says there. Cabe? Learn Cabe? Don't know. And that's the dollar coin. And then we get into the goatees. Oh, no, there's another goatee. Dollar, excuse me. Yeah, okay. KM327. It's another commemorative. It's a birth of a nation, I guess. A hundred year uh, in 97 was a hundred years. No, oh, birth of a uh, airplane? I don't know. Nope. 19, 1897. Okay, nope. Sir Charles Kingsford Smith. See? I haven't done hardly any research. Just that I know it's a commemorative coin and it's worth a few dollars. And then we got a cam. That was 327. Now we're on 364. Okay. Like I said, they made a ton of commemorative coins. And they're up to 364 now. Copper nickel. And this is... What did I write on there? I didn't. Okay. But it's an Australian 50 cent commemorative. That put a little C there. That way I know it's commemorative. And that's why it's worth a few dollars. Only because it wasn't supposed to be intended for circulation, which, like anything else we do, everything usually ends up being in circulation. <laughs> Whatever. Philip, I'm trying to do a video here. 
KM401, we were just at 364. So there's 40 different numbers that's been added into the, the woodwork. 1999, five cent coin. And it's got that character again. But because it's got a new new front, new obverse, this one looks like she's grumpy. Doesn't she look grumpy? She's starting to look like Queen Victoria. Her great-grandmother. Great-great-grandmother. <laughs> this is a proof. It's a 10 cent proof. As you can see. KM402. And it's got that cool looking alien thing coming out of his stomach or whatever gills. It's only 50,000 of these made. So that's a very low number. Well, but what's the value of it? It's only worth a buck. <laughs> yeah. Some things are just not worth money, even if it's got a low mintage. But there's another $1 coin, 1999. And that's a commemorative uh, something, something, whatever. I wrote on it what it was, but I can't read it. I can't read my own language, writing. KM405, 270, $2.75. They made almost 30000 29000 Lumen Browns, of course. And, yep, some type of design on it. That's what's on there. Something old, something. I'm not gonna get into it. We're almost up. Uh, what? How many minutes now? I can't even tell you. Let me see. Yeah, over 32 minutes, so we're almost down here. 2001 KM491. Copper nickel. Look at that different design of the email. They made it smaller. And more flowery around uh, it. But no, there's no crown this time. But the crest is there. There's some design change that they decided to do. KM491. Now we're up to 500 coins. Now, we're, when everything was going good, we were only up to 80 coins. 80 different varieties. And then... As soon as we went past 80, now we're at 500. I mean, come on, guys. How many commemorative coins are you going to keep making? Here's a commemorative coin right here. Hold on. There we go. Another grumpy old face, 2001. Oop. Yep, Centenary of Federation. 1901. Hmm. I'm wondering if that's when they actually uh, took over the. No, because they were still a. Com they were still a. Commonwealth of Brit Britain. In the 20s. There's a pumped up face. <laughs> 602. Last one was 534. So now we're up to 600 coins. So they made 600 different varieties since they start since KM80. It's a 50 cent coin. All right, and here's another goatee. And this is um, something Anzac. Um, you've probably seen a couple of these before. You see, see this is a UC100. It's still a Krauss catalog, but. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't know, but it's it's a cross catalog. But they named it UC instead of KM. And I didn't write nothing on here, but it's a hundred years of Anzac, whatever that is. It's an Australian thing. And what you all been waiting for? A two dollar coin. <laughs> a Goaty Odie. Hody goaty, whatever. This is the uh, this is aluminum bronze. There's only five million of these minted. It's a commemorative. As you can see, proof like. 
for aluminum bronze is pretty good. Anyway, UC117, it's worth about eight bucks. And that's what Jim finds, all those goldies. Well, this is, like I said, this these are gold now, too. These are $2 coins. And he finds like $40, $60 worth of these. Which is probably $60, probably for a 30-pack. That's about all you're going to get out of it. <laughs> for the prices. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, segment of the, uh, uh, you know, showing off my coins from the world. But that's all I have uh, on this uh, country today. And sometime next week, I'll put out another one, um, A to Z, uh, whatever the next countries are. So everybody have a blessed uh, weekend. Um, and I'll be seeing you, on, uh, seeing you in the chats. Thank you. Odie's out.